This is the motherboard or main board and is the heart of the computer. We will be installing this inside the case first. Our motherboard is designed for a slot 1 CPU. We are going to be installing a Pentium 3, so this is why we need this configuration. If you are not going to install a Pentium 3, just make sure to ask the salesman which motherboard you need for your particular CPU. Now let's identify the different areas of the motherboard that you need to be familiar with. These are the ISA slots. Certain components like modems or other cards might plug in here. These are the PCI slots. They are the new generation of slots and designed for components that require faster data access. Cards like video adapters or high-speed interface cards often use a PCI slot for faster performance. This is the AGP or Advanced Graphics Port. The purpose of the AGP slot is to accelerate all graphics functions. The only card you can plug in here is an AGP compatible graphics adapter. If your motherboard has an AGP slot like this one, you should definitely buy an AGP graphics adapter. This is the BIOS chip. Software stored on this chip controls the basic functions of your PC and how the components connect and work together at their most basic level. On the newer boards like this one, you can update this software when new versions are released. A new version might support a new type of CPU or other component. These are the connectors for the hard drive, CD-ROM drive, DVD drive, and floppy drives. And these are the ports for the DIMMs, the dual inline memory modules. This is where we will plug in our RAM. Now let's look at the rest of the connections. This is the CPU slot where we will plug in our Pentium 3 CPU. These are the serial ports. If you have an external modem, it might plug in here. This is the parallel port. This is where you will plug in the printer. Here are two USB ports. These are designed for USB devices like digital cameras, scanners, and many new add-on peripherals for your PC. And these are the PS2 connectors. This is where we will plug in our mouse and keyboard. Now I will install the motherboard into the case. I will first line up the board with its ports to the ports frame of the case. Like this. The holes of the board have to line up with the holes on the mounting area so that you can put the brass standoffs in. If the holes in the mounting surface are not labeled for the type of motherboard you are going to use, then line up the holes by eye. As you can see here, each of the holes for your motherboard is surrounded by a shiny ring of solder. Here are the various screw points for my board. After I locate my screw point for the board, I will mount the motherboard to the mounting area. This is a brass standoff. Use these brass standoffs only to mount your motherboard to the mounting area. Always double check the holes you are going to use and count the number of standoffs you will use. Make sure you put the same number of screws in to mount the motherboard on top of the brass standoff. A misplaced standoff can short circuit your motherboard. These are the points for the screws on my board. And with my fingers, I can screw in the brass standoffs. After I screw them all in, I can mount my motherboard on top of the brass standoffs by screwing in the screws. Once you finish tightening all the screws, your motherboard should be securely mounted inside the case and look like this.